Right, I think I've actually um, getting somewhere now. Um, I put the barrel back on. I put the starter back in. Couldn't get the engine to knock, so I took the start starter back out again because it creates too much drag. Um, on this side, I put this pin, this gear back on, and his butt and the clutch basket, which connects it to the gearbox. Right, so I'll just spin the engine with that disconnected. So we're not we're spinning the engine over, but not the starter or the gearbox. Okay, now I'll put the clutch basket on which will connect the engine to the gearbox. There you go, she's in. So now when I spin the engine, it will spin the gearbox as well. And this is where the knockings come from. Right, so let's just have a listen. As you can clearly hear there's a knock. I'm just going to pull the basket back off to disconnect the gearbox and spin it again at high rev just to prove. There's something wrong with the gearbox. Right, so. Oh, still got to take the whole engine apart, but at least I know now it's an actual gearbox. Not the big end, or the small end, or the crankcase bearings, or the starter motor. It's the gearbox. Thanks. Right, I've just pulled the oil strainer out. This is the oil strainer, and I've just pulled it out with a long nose pliers. And um, it's a bit gunked up, as you can see. This is not the clearest of cameras. Right, what I'm going to do is I've got a magnet here. I'm just going to see if I can pick up any filings. Right, so that is. Do, 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 do. Let's give it a bit of rub. There we go. Right, so I have got bits of metal. It's, it's hard to see in this light, but I have actually got um, gunk, um, bits of metal on the end of my magnet. Um, yeah, I can, actually, I can actually feel it. So that's, that's telling me. That <clears throat> there's a bearing collapsed, or there's a gear with. Is it? I think it's either a tooth missing off a gear, or a couple of teeth that's making that knock, or we got a bearing that's collapsed, and the oil strainer has picked up the particles, which means it's all been around the engine, but. There we go, the oil strainer has done its job. Um, it's quite, I mean they're not big lumps, they're only little bits. So it's probably, I don't know, it could be just swarf, it could be just natural swarf that's in the engine to start with. But there seems to be quite a lot there and bearing in mind this bike has been serviced so it's had a good couple of flush outs. Um, it all changes, or should have done. But we're sort of left with this debris. I mean, some of it—it's not sharp under my fingers, but yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a bit gritty. I mean, there's a little bit, a little bit of swarf there on my finger. Right, there we go. So that has to be washed. I would enjoy be washed actually. Okay, thanks. Well, I've just pulled out the gauze and washed it, um, so it's now clean. Just gonna hit it with a bit of WD, just so it doesn't rust. That can is that can is so old. 
keep a good old dose of it. Because obviously I don't, that's probably made out of copper anyway, but I don't want it to rust. That can go back in for now. That's it, it's back in place. Job done. Incidentally, um, some of you mechanics watching this might think, God, this is bloody painful. But um, I've never done this before. I've, I've done something similar to this, but it's years ago. But my anyway, I had an expert showing me. I just want to show you um, how I took the clutch off. I basically make a, made a board. In the book, they show like this metal frame. So, being a wood butcher, um, I braced it, braced the basket using a bit of ply. Um, to take off this yoke, where I don't know what it's called, I made um, from a piece of handlebar. Where's the nut? There it is. It's like a castle nut. Now, there we go. Well, I, ba I basically, this is a bit of handlebar, which I cut using an angle grinder to fit over that. And bearing in mind, I was working blind, as in I was sort of guessing the sizes of it. Let me get that on there. Anyway, that did fit. Oh, there we go. Um, actually, that fits quite well. I'm surprised. Um, yeah, I might. What I might do with this is um, that leg needs to be bent in a little bit. Print, you know, I'll file it down so it's a nice fit for when I go back, when I put it back. And I might cut this bar down a bit and then tack in um, a nut of some description. So then I can get a torque on it and get it to the correct torque and I'll put it back. <clears throat> but as I said before, some of you guys that are in the know that probably do this for a living um, are probably watching this and thinking, oh my God, it's taking that long to work that out. But it's all as far as I'm concerned, I'm enjoying myself. And if someone else comes across this problem, hopefully by watching this video or my little stumbling videos you too may be able to work out what has actually gone wrong with your engine and hopefully how to fix it so <clears throat> to get to this gearbox now this this whole engine's got to be split so the barrels have got to come back off no bother i've got to get this mag off this flywheel mag magneto what you want to call it so i've got to remove that nut so I've got a, but I need a puller of some description to get that off because that should be on a, a driftwood key I think but um, anyway I might have to go and visit my brother and see if he's got get all the pullers off of him um, there we go that's it that's it for now but that's where I'm going next and behind that, that lay shaft, that shaft, drive shaft, final drive shaft, what you want to call it, um, into the gearbox. Cheers.